Hey guys, um, so I promised you guys I would do some prepping videos. I was just out here pushing my baby in his stroller. And I've been looking over this book. I bought it about four or five years ago. This is Southeast Foraging by Chris Bennett. I had to share with you some things that I learned from this book. Um, given the situation we're in right now with the economy and the virus, we don't know how things will be in the future as far as getting food. And certain people want to be able to afford food so yeah this is a good thing for everyone to know um, and how your yard can keep your family alive right now it's the beginning of spring it's okay as you can see we have not cut our grass for the first time yet um, it has been growing because we have a friend that mows our yard and he hasn't been by yet so we are quarantined at the moment and um, yeah I just want to show you guys some things in my yard that are edible and you might have some of these things in your yard or you can share what you have in your area to forage um, you can't eat every plant so do your research but you can eat a lot of things from your yard so I wanted to show you some things in my yard that we could forage if we needed to so I'm not proud of this, but this is my front flower beds and wild blackberry bushes have taken them over. We foraged some wild blackberries last year, but I have plenty of that right now and we should have a lot of wild blackberries this summer. Here I have some kudzu vines. This stuff is all over our road and this is edible. A lot of people make kudzu jelly with it. There's lots of recipes. I'll try to link some below. But kudzu is a vine. It's actually invasive, but it is edible and it has some beautiful purple flowers, purple and yellow flowers in the summer that smell just like juicy fruit gum. And yeah, you can make jelly out of that. So that's edible. So here I have some rosemary that I planted a few years ago. Um, usually you have to plant this, but you might have some in your area and you, it goes really well with like chicken and dishes like that and pot roast. And rosemary is actually good for detoxing radiation from your body. So we've got some wild grape vines going back here that we can get grapes from. I've actually got some grape vines planted in my backyard. I'm just waiting for them to get mature enough to eat from. And later on this summer we will also have a lot of honeysuckle growing back here. Honeysuckle is edible so we'll have that as well. I'll try to find a picture but I don't have a I don't have it growing up currently but it will be in the next few months so here we have some chickweed growing I actually have this all over my yard so this will be perfect to add to like a summer salad but yes this grows everywhere and it is edible so, so why would you want to forage um, is probably going to be your main question um, we can go to the grocery stores of course but this is for those times possibly in the future where you know our economy is not looking so great you know, our economy is not looking so great during this crisis and there will be times where we might have hyperinflation there might be hyperinflation there might be um, times where there are high unemployment rates and people can't afford to pay their bills or to buy food. So this would be one of those times or, you know, in a, in a grid down situation or you just never know in times of war. During the Great Depression, foraging was a way a lot of families survived that. So if we ever get to that point again, it's good to still know how to do this just in case. You may never have to use it or you may use it just for fun. But it's something that I feel is something that we should not forget how to do. A skill that has kept people alive for thousands of years um, since the beginning of time really. So 
I feel like it would be helpful for my subscribers and those watching this to know just a little bit about it. So I'm going to show you the things that I have in my yard to forage and different areas have different things. So um, you can go on Google, you can go on Pinterest, you can go on YouTube, you can buy books to learn how to forage the things in your areas. But I will say I'm not a professional. You need to make sure that what you are foraging is edible because there are plants that are poisonous and dangerous to consume and you do not want to eat those so make sure you know for certain what you're putting in your mouth <laughs> so with that being said that's my little disclaimer make sure you know what you're putting in your mouth make sure you know exactly what that plan is before you eat it and definitely wash them before you eat them um, animals use the bathroom on these plants outside people walk on plants so just make sure you know what you are foraging and that it's clean Okay. So these are some trees I have in my yard. These are little juniper berries. They're bigger in the winter and I believe that's when you harvest them. Since it's early spring, most of mine are gone it looks like. But you can, the berries actually look like this. Um, I don't think we really have any right now. Um, you're supposed to harvest them in the winter but that is a winter berry that you can harvest from this tree. Okay, down here we have some chickweed. There is chickweed, chickweed all over my yard. Um, so that would be good in a salad. So this next page is asparagus. I actually found some wild asparagus growing in my raised beds the other day. I don't remember ever planting it. And when I came across this page, I was like, it definitely must have been from that um asparagus loves to escape cultivation into the wild look for asparagus near cultivated variety at the edge of fields woods and ditches the tender splendor spears are a real treat in the early spring so that's what i just found in my garden and i didn't plant it and i love asparagus this next page we have the black cherry tree not everyone's gonna have this but i actually have a black cherry tree in my yard and it just bloomed so it should have some cherries on it in the next month or two so black cherries are edible um, they're pretty tart but it's food okay over here in this wood pile I'm not gonna get too close because there might be snakes but <laughs> there I believe that is black mustard over there so you could gather that um, it says you can eat the flower buds, the flowers, leaves, roots, seed pods, seeds, and the stalks. So pretty much the whole plant is edible. Page, it says uh, blueberries. I do have some blueberry bushes in my backyard, but they are not producing fruit yet. Um, I used to have some from producing fruit, but they were cut down by accident. So I'm waiting on my little ones to grow, but you do have to have two blueberry bushes to pollinate one another so you need more than one to produce fruit so we have wild onion and wild garlic all over our yard if it's not mowed this is what you can kind of see it standing up we haven't mowed yet but this is great for chives or you can actually pull the whole onion bulb up did you get it you can pull the whole bulb up and wash it and cook Look at this. This is pretty. What is that? I'm not sure what that is. Okay, so you can pull the onion up and chop it up, and they do get bigger, but you can use those in all kinds of things for onion flavor. This is cat ear dandelion, but I'm not sure. But you can eat cat ear dandelion, it grows really close to the ground. <coughs> Again, make sure you're sure of what you're foraging before you eat it though, because I'm not 100% on that one. I was wrong about that other one. The mustard, the black mustard, that was actually curly burdock. The black mustard has a more purple stalk. And this is curly dock is a ubiquitous weed with tart, sour leaves, crunchy celery-like stalks, and nutty seeds. The leaves, stalks, and seeds are edible. Okay, next, of course, is dandelion. You can eat the leaves, flowers, flower buds, root, crown, and the roots. You can make a great detox tea with dandelion roots. Um, 
yeah there's all kinds of th you can make uh, dandelion jellies there's all kinds of things you can make with dandelion so it's not just a weed in your yard but I try not to pick the dandelions um, because that's the bees first food in the spring but in a survival situation they are definitely edible so here's a few dandelions in my yard we have lots around here right now and of course they turn into wishes so okay that onion I was showing you is called field garlic you can eat the leaves and the bulbs field garlic covers fields and open areas in the fall winter and spring it's strong onion flavored leaves that look like chives why go to the store for chives when they grow all around you okay these are called field mustard and these little yellow flowers on them i believe it's field mustard i'm not sure <laughs> again do your own research but as far as the picture goes i do believe this is field mustard right here and it says in the early spring field mustard fills fields pastures and gardens with its yellow flowers that have spicy mustard green flavor my favorite parts are the flowers and flower buds which are sharp and spicy field all right here we have goldenrod we have a ton of this in the fall closer to closer to august and september we have a lot of goldenrod um you know it's growing here but it's not at that full peak but goldenrod is the leaves and the flowers are edible and you can make so many things with goldenrod a lot of people use it for um tea or you can make um the yellow flowers on goldenrod bloom at the same time as ragweed during hay fever season. Goldenrod does not cause hay fever like ragweed does. The leaves and flowers make an excellent mild but tasty tea. Um, a lot of people have said that this is good for, I believe, arthritis and lots of other things. Again, Google it and or go on Pinterest and look up goldenrod, but there's so many uses for it. Okay, here on this page we have hen bits. Um, henbit is pretty is a pretty annual with a pleasant herbal nutty flavor. The flavor is at its best during the fall and early winter. So it's a small downy plant in the mint family. That's what it looks like. So here we have some henbit. It has the little purple flowers on it. So you can eat the flowers, stem, and leaves of henbit. Um, you can use it in salads. In cooking um, here's a picture of the kudzu flower I talked about we have a lot of that but that the flowers usually don't come out until like June or July we have clover all all over our yard you can eat the clover and you can eat the clover flowers red and white you can make jellies with it um, all kinds of stuff with clover so you can eat all this clover and I think we all have clover everywhere, am I right? <laughs> this is dandelion leaves. Okay, so oak trees make acorns which are edible and you can make flour out of them. Look at this little ladybug here. But you can eat acorns just like a squirrel, it's a nut. And you can make things with acorns or you can make acorn flour with the acorns from the tree. Okay, here we have pokeweed. They turn into these big red stalked bushes with purple berries on them. A lot of kids play with them um, and use them as like ink, um, the purple ink in them. You cannot eat these. People mistake these for elderberries. Elderberries are much smaller. A lot of kids end up in the ER because if you eat the berries, it will make you very sick. So do not eat them if they are big and full like this, but you can make things out of the poke shoots like the very young first shoots of poke um have you ever heard the song poke salad annie by tony joe white well he's talking about pokeweed southerners have an almost mystical love for pokeweed which is passed on from grandparents grandparents or other elderly relatives who wax on about their love for the greens um so my great grandmother my grandpa talks about how my great grandmother used to go gather poke 
for their dinners sometimes. So yeah, this is not unheard of, but I am a little leery of poke just because of, you know, it can be poisonous if you don't boil it really well. So you definitely want to read up on how to harvest and cook or use these um, foraged foods as well, which I might do separate videos on the future, but this video is just mainly showing you some of the things you can forage. Okay, so here we have some purple dead nettle. And this is used, um, you can eat the leaves, stems, and the flowers of purple dead nettle. Of course, for the pine trees, you can use the pine needles and make a very high vitamin C um, pine needle tea. So, um, Prep Stutters, their channel has a great video on how to make pine needle tea, and I'll try to link it below. I absolutely love her channel, and it's what inspired me to start making similar content because she's taught me so much, and I absolutely love her channel. So, go check out the Prep Stutters channel when you have time. Okay, so I believe these are sheep sorrel. I could be wrong, but it looks similar to the picture. But again, you want to make sure before you eat anything. Okay, so here we have a sow thistle. Sow thistles drive farmers crazy by coming up in their pastures and spreading. Um, the animals don't eat sow thistles, but a, with a little bit of work, they're delicious for us. The flower stalk is like celery in texture and flavor, and the tender young leaves are tasty greens, and the florets of sow thistle have a wonderful bittersweet flavor. So here's a picture when it's ready to harvest. Okay, back here I have my fig tree. It's a little one, but it's coming along. Don't step on it. I have my grape vines and my muscadine vines. I have a little nectarine tree. Some places have wild raspberries. This is my raspberry bush that I bought and planted. And then this is my blueberry bush. In some places, blueberries and raspberries no, this is mine. grow wild. And here's this, another blueberry bush. This is mine. And then I have a pear tree. Some people have those around. Over here is my pomegranate tree blooming. Um, again, you're gonna have to plant this type of thing on your own more than likely. <laughs> Okay, this is a maple tree and some, this is what their leaves look like, in some colder places you can tap these and get maple syrup from them. So these are violets, these are the only ones I've seen in my yard so far this year, but these um, with their delicate purple, yellow, or white blossoms are among my favorite springtime plants. The flowers are gorgeous, candied, and the leaves have a slight peppery flavor and a chewy texture. This is wild lettuce. I have this all over my yard. So we can have lots of wild lettuce salads for sure. So here I have strawberries that I've planted, but these little yellow leaves, all of these are wild um, false strawberries. So you can eat those. But again, I'm not sure if it's the leaves or just the berries. So you might want to do your own research on that. But we have that everywhere. <laughs> I think that is more stinging nettle. So this was the wild asparagus that was in my garden. Look how long this has gotten in just two days. It was just sticking out of the ground the other day and now it's like ridiculously what? long. Look at that asparagus, Reagan. It's so big. Where? Right there. Ah! Here we have a pine cone that you can get pine nuts out of. Here's some more wild strawberry over here by the trees. Okay, so here we have some wood sorrel. That might be it. Has yellow flowers. So this is wood sorrel. Sorrel. It grows where the ground is usually bare. It gets a lot of sun. Um, in the city or in the country, it comes up in garden beds and sidewalks, any place where the bare, where it's bare soil. Um, it has a lemony sour flavor. Um, you can put it in like a salad.
Look what I found. This is so thistle right here. I have several of them growing behind this window. But I guess they like some shade, but there's several over by the house. So I've got like four right here. They're really tall. Alright guys, I was looking for this one earlier and I couldn't find it, but I knew I had seen it before and here it is. It was out here by the road at the end of our driveway. Wow. Right here. See these little leaves? Doesn't it look just like that? Like little hearts? No. Yeah. But it says um, it has a peppery okay, taste, go, get back. but you can eat the stalk. You can eat the stalk and the leaves of Shepherd's Purse. All right, so these are daylilies. When these first sprout, you can pull these up and eat the roots like the like tubers, almost like little tuber fingerling potatoes. But yeah, these are daylilies, and when they first sprout, mine are already too grown, I think. But you can pull them up and eat the tubes. Let me pull it up and see. Oh, I broke it off. Whoops. But anyway. What else we have over here? My chickens. That is all the things. I'm sure there's much more. There's much more even in my book that I just couldn't find or I couldn't identify in my yard. But there might be so much more and I'm sure there's even more in the woods. You can find like pecan trees. My neighbor has a pecan tree. My other neighbors have apple trees. Um, some have peach trees. We used to have a peach and an apple tree, but they died. Um, there's so much food all around us, and we have about two acres of woods back here. I'm sure there's plenty of other stuff I could find out there if I went out there and looked. I just don't want to get on the snake today. So, um, I might do that in another video, though. But, yeah, like I said, there's so much you can forage in your yard. What have you foraged, or what can you do you know that you can forage in your own yard? Um, or what have you forged from other places um, comment down below where you live and what you forage in your area or what you know you can forage um, just so others in your area are aware of what's available um, this is just a small percentage of the things that you can forage just in my area there's so much more that we can forage and if we all started doing that there would be no shortage no food shortage for sure so I hope this was helpful and if not I hope it was at least entertaining I'm not a professional I have only ate a few things that I've foraged um, mainly berries so just be careful make sure you know exactly what you're foraging um, and if you're not sure about it I wouldn't eat it until you're 100% certain of what that plant is because a lot of plants look very similar so just be careful use common sense and make sure you do your research and happy foraging thank you all so much for watching this video please don't forget to like and subscribe down below for more content like this and comment some video ideas down below of other videos you'd like to see from me so thanks again for watching i love you and jesus loves you too god bless you bye